Oh my goodness, welcome. Today is our seventh week in our seven week chakra journey. I cannot believe we have been going through this for seven weeks together, venturing into the subtle energy system. I truly hope that um, you have been able to have this self exploration journey and have explored each of these chakras. You might remember some more than others, you might tap in more to some than others, but I hope you've been able to really connect in with all the work we've been doing over the last seven weeks. Remember, this is a journey, this is not a finite destination. We are always working at these chakras, at our practice, at our meditation, pranayama, yoga, asana practice. So, this is always a journey and you can always come back to it which is so exciting so as we ventured through all the chakras we started with muladhara our root chakra then we moved into our svadhisthana our sacral chakra we moved into manipura our solar plexus our anahata our heart chakra our vishuddha our throat chakra ajna our third eye chakra and now we are at sahasara the seventh chakra, the crown chakra. And the crown chakra is the chakra that explores our journey beyond the physical, the energy, the things that we don't see in the world, the things that we, um, that we tap into that energy, that, 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 that endless amount of opportunity that is out there that we, are exploring beyond the physical body. The um, crown chakra is associated with consciousness, with awareness of higher consciousness, of wisdom, of inner knowing, um, connecting to the formless, the limitless, that there's, there are no limitations, that there, it's all out there and open and available to us. Realization, liberation from limiting patterns that we create within ourselves, from that physical, that mental, we really open up to the chakra that there's boundless and unlimited, oppor unlimited opportunity out there. It is also in communion with higher states of consciousness, maybe a more connection to our divine. Divine can be uh, related to God, it can be related to a higher power, it can be related to just connecting to the universe. It's not one specific thing. It's not, um, it's whatever your belief system is, whatever you want to connect into. It's about ecstasy, bliss, kind of finding that space. And it's about presence. It's about bringing ourselves here and the now and really connecting to where we are. So often we're busy with the past and worried about the future that we tend to lose that opportunity to be in the present moment. And that is really part of the journey of yoga and certainly part of that sahasara bringing us to the present moment. So today we're going to be moving our body a little bit, gently moving, connecting to that higher divine, the divine within us all, the formless energy that surrounds us. And then we're going to move into a yoga nidra where we're going to turn inward, take that time for ourselves to rest, to connect with our minds, to connect with our breath, to connect with our body, and to really savor everything we've been doing over the last seven weeks um, and connecting into all the chakras within the center of the body. So today we're going to begin in chin mudra. So chin mudra is where we connect the pointed finger, which is representative of the ego and the thumb, which is representative of maybe God, maybe the divine, maybe a higher power, whatever it is that you want to connect into. There's no specific name to it. It's whatever feels best for you. And as we connect these thumb and the index finger together, let's go ahead and rest our palms open towards the universe. This union helps break the patterns and helps us focus the mind. So let's close our eyes if that feels right for you. Sit up tall through the spine. Soften the shoulders. Start to ease into your body. Ease into this space, this awareness from within.
take this time to take yourself out of where you were and out of where you're going. Bring yourself into a space of pure presence. Feeling all the different qualities. Maybe beginning with your Muladhara chakra and just reconnecting and rooting your body into the earth. Reminding yourself that all that you need is within you. It is not the house. It's not the job. It's not the things. It's an inner awareness, an inner confidence that whatever it is you need, you can tap into yourself. You don't need those other things to define who you are, to give you what you need. You can always look inward and remind yourself that everything you need is already there. Begin to breathe in through the nose. Maybe you start to just breathe in really slowly and consciously to the belly. Maybe you release the breath and slowly allow the breath to just at its own pace, leave your body. Breathing in peace and releasing any tension or anything that's not serving you. Whether it's a thought, whether it's some crisis you're going through right now, whether it's a feeling of unease or anxiety, Allow yourself to just be in this moment. Reminding yourself that you need not be anywhere but here. You, not need, you do not need to do anything but be just in this space. Remind yourself that where you are right now and what you're doing right now is enough. Try to let your shoulders drip away from your ears a little more. Try to soften the eyes behind the eyelids. Maybe release the teeth from one another. Release the jaw and the tongue. Maybe you even visualize all the chakras that are running at the center of your body, beginning with your Muladhara chakra. And then moving into your sacral chakra. your solar plexus chakra, your heart chakra, your throat chakra, your third eye chakra. Now there's this vision beyond the crown, the top of the head, the sahasara. represented with a purple color. Maybe you can even see and envision that purple light emanating from the crown of the head. Maybe you can even feel a little pulse in the crown.
today, I'd like us to maybe set an intention or a mantra, whatever it is you'd like to do today. Maybe there's a specific mantra or intention that is calling to you today. Honor that and take a moment to recite that to yourself about three or four times. Feel it all the way down to the bone, all the way day, all the way into a cellular kind of construction. The belief system that you are that. You are in that state. Whenever you're ready, let's begin to reconnect to the room around us. Maybe you keep your eyes closed just for the next moment or two and get a little bit of movement through the fingers, maybe releasing the fingertips, the finger and the thumb, just create a little bit of movement there. Maybe you just start to gently move the neck Really focusing on grounding through the sits bones and recognizing the connection of the two ends of the chakra system, the Muladhara chakra and the, sh and the crown chakra, how they are so connected. One cannot be without the other. Sometimes we approach our yoga practice with this seeking of bliss, bliss state. But we haven't connected first to the earth. We haven't created our foundation. And as we've guided ourselves through the seven weeks, we've worked through each of the different chakras, recognizing each of their importance and their relevance to the journey, each holding components that are vital to opening up these chakras, unblocking them if they're blocked, allowing energy to flow through them, opening up ourselves to that inner journey of exploration and curiosity. When you're ready, let's go ahead and bring our neck back into that neutral space. Take the hands and rest them at the thighs, roll the shoulder blades back and drop the chin towards the heart in recognition of the heart chakra. Inviting self-compassion and self-love. Almost bowing down to ourselves. Go ahead and lift the chin. And then turn your gaze from one side to the other. Breathing in and breathing out. And your eyes are still closed. making sure to invite a sense of peace from a physical sense into the body and also a mindful sense of peace within the mind. Blocking out any distractions, any thoughts. When you're ready, let's come back in towards center. And maybe we'll open the eyes, and depending on where we're at, we'll go ahead and lengthen the legs.
So coming off your bolster, if you've been resting on one, if that feels good, you can always stay on it for our staff pose for our dadasana. So from here, maybe extending the legs and creating a little bit of movement through the legs. It's kind of loosening up through the joints, through the knees, through the hips. Wonderful. And then when we're ready, let's go ahead. And I want you to imagine you're pulling that, that bright purple pinkish light from the crown and extending it out towards the universe, lengthening through the spine, connecting into the ground through the sits bones. And as you come down into a forward fold, beaming that light forward, connecting in down to the back of the body here, resting forward in our staff pose. Softening into the space, relaxing into the shoulders, beaming from the crown of the head. Finding a sense of quiet stillness here without forcing the body. As you're ready, begin to walk the hands back through center and moving into Janushirshasana. So bringing the right leg out, bending into the left leg. With the left foot into the inner thigh, gently twist towards the left, taking the right hand long and finding a side bend, reaching through the crown of the head. Maybe reaching for the toe, maybe not. Maybe resting the left hand to the left thigh or perhaps extending the arm overhead. As we reach through the crown, reach perhaps through the arm, depending on how this feels for you. Aiming towards that space above, that space beyond. You've heard me say the universe has your back. This is that space that's beyond what we can see. It's that energy that flows, that boundless amount of opportunity. As you're ready, sweep that top arm, lift up, find a little reach behind to the left and a little twist with the right towards the left. Reaching through the crown of the head and grounding in through the sits bones as you find length through the spine. See if you can invite a sense of ease in this movement. Connecting to the body in a compassionate, loving way. Unwinding from your tailbone, low back, mid back. Coming back into the seated position with a nice tall spine, reach with the arms above our head. Take that beautiful purple pink light and sweep it forward as we come into a gentle forward fold here. Grounding down through the sits bones, softening through the shoulders. Releasing the body forward. Again, inviting a sense of peace and calm within the body. Beaming through the crown of the head, softening through the face. As you gently walk your hands back in towards center. 
Let us guide the right foot forward and find a half cow face here. So taking maybe the left foot over the right, if that feels comfortable. If not, take that left foot and just draw it in towards the inner thigh of the right. If you're comfortable with cow face, which is where we take the legs, we kind of, kind of create a bit of a knot, you're welcome to do this. This can be really intense if you haven't done it before. If you have any hip issues, I wouldn't recommend it. You can go into a half cow face with the right leg extended and the left leg finding its way over the right. Taking the hands, interlacing them to the front, shoulders pull back, ground into the sits bones and lift through the crown. And I want you to imagine as if you are elongating from the crown, the tail to the crown, inviting a sense of movement through each of the chakras. Now the chakras, they, they spin. They spin with energy as they're, they're fully able to invite and move their energy through. Imagine that they're spinning from the perineum where we began with our muladhara all the way past the chakra, past the crown chakra. The top energizing your body, finding a sense of balance. Maybe there's one chakra that's still feeling a little off balance. That's okay. It's part of the journey. As you're ready, release the left leg, release the hands and extend the left leg long and draw that right foot in towards center. Finding our Janushir Shasana here, gently twisting towards the right, taking the left and gliding those fingers towards the foot, pressing down into that right hip and extending the arm overhead if you wish, if you wish. Finding a gentle side bend here, reaching maybe through the crown of the head, beaming that beautiful light, reaching with the top arm, extending out as if you're inviting opening and inviting space within the body and the space around you. Try to soften through the side of the body. From here, take that top arm and just bring it back. Ground into the fingertips, ground into the sits bones and twist towards the right. Lifting with your heart, extending through the back of the neck. And just finding this ease of this pose. When we are in communion with the universe, there's a sense of inner knowing, a sense of balance. I've, I've been there before and it's, it's a, really, a really powerful place of comfort, of knowing that whatever is our course and whatever is meant to be on our course, it's there for a reason. It almost allows us the freedom to just let go of trying to control what we're trying to control, knowing that whatever comes is meant for us. However hard, however challenging, it was there for a reason. Come back through center, unwind your body. Take a deep breath in, reach the arms overhead, press and extend through the fingertips, find that light. Take that light and shimmer it forward as you come into a forward fold. There's a form of surrender that takes place here. And just surrender alone is a powerful practice. And surrender is not giving up. Surrender is an act of bravery and courage and a, 
and a knowing, an inner knowing and confidence that when we surrender to what is, we are in the hands of the universe, the divine, whatever it is you call it. And that our best interests are in those hands. Come back to your center, lift yourself up, ground into the sits bones, take the left leg maybe forward, maybe draw that right knee in towards the inner thigh and possibly cross it over your midline. Maybe interlace the fingers and lift up to your heart, shining that bright light. Let your shoulders drop. Let whatever weight you're carrying be released to the universe, to the earth. Let it soak up and let it be taken away from you. You don't need to carry those heavy bags. When you're ready, go ahead and unwind your legs and extend them out long and just give them a little wiggle. Now we're going to move into our yoga nidra. So for those of you who haven't done a yoga nidra before, it is conscious sleep. I will be talking throughout the whole process. It'll take for the remainder of our class. So I'd like you to find yourself in whatever comfortable position you want to be in. If you'd like to be seated, that's fine. I typically do it lying down, but that's okay. If you fall asleep, it's okay. Let yourself have that space. That's your body's way of saying it needs a little rest. If you fall asleep and the class is over, we will turn the class off and you continue to do your thing. So don't worry, don't worry about that. I'm gonna guide you through the yoga nidra. Um, you'll hear my voice talking and asking you to do different things. Of course, within the mind's eye, not physically moving the body. So it's important that we come to this really comfortable. So if you want to even close your lights or get your socks on, I'm going to get my blanket on. You can even have soft music running in the background if that feels comfortable. I think you can hear the music from here as well, but um, if you don't have the music on, you're welcome to put your own music on. They say that yoga nidra, one session of yoga nidra is almost the equivalent of four hours of um, REI sleep, which is that deep, deep sleep should wake up feeling very rested and very uh, calm. If at any time you need to kind of wake up a little bit, please just do what works best for you. Okay. Wonderful, let's go ahead and make ourselves comfortable. I'm going to walk you through our yoga nidra. Maybe close your eyes. Begin to connect into the breathing. Connect into the stillness in the body. We're going to systematically move our attention through each of the points below. So let's begin to bring some awareness to our forehead and our throat. Maybe you simply notice a feeling in the throat or the forehead
Now let's bring our attention to our right shoulder. Our right elbow. Our right wrist. our right tip of our, the tip of our right thumb. The tip of the right index finger. The tip of the right middle finger. The tip of the right ring finger. The tip of the right little finger. the right wrist, the right elbow, your right shoulder, your throat. Bring our attention to our left shoulder, our left elbow, our left wrist, the tip of the left thumb, the tip of the left index finger, tip of the middle finger, the tip of the left ring finger, the tip of the left little finger, left wrist, left elbow, left shoulder. Let's bring our attention to our throat. The space between the breasts, the right breast, Back again to the space between the breast, the left breast, the space between the breasts, the navel, the lower abdomen. Let us move down to our right hip bringing awareness and our attention there. Right knee, right ankle, tip of the right big toe, tip of the second toe, tip of the right middle toe, tip of the right fourth toe, tip of the right little toe, right ankle, right knee, right hip, lower abdomen, let's move to our left hip left knee, left ankle, tip of the left big toe, tip of the left second toe, tip of the left middle toe, tip of the left fourth toe, tip of the left little toe left ankle, left knee, left hip. Let's move our attention back to our lower abdomen, navel, space between the breasts, throat, forehead.
Let's take an inhale. Exhale as though you are breathing from the top of the head down to the perineum at the base of the spine. Inhale as though you are breathing from the perineum at the base of the spine to the top of the head. Exhale and inhale many times in this way. Exhaling down, inhaling up. Imagine that the breath is flowing in a thin, milky white stream from top to bottom and bottom to top. It does not matter whether you or not you literally see the stream with your inner eye, but know that this stream of energy is actually there in the subtle body. And one day, will be experienced directly. Now let us bring our attention to the space between the eyebrows. Maybe you can visualize a soft illumination there. Stay in this space for several breaths. Bring your attention to your throat center and listen. What is the sound of your inner self? Stay in this space for several breaths. Bring your attention to your chest, your heart center. Feel a sense of warmth emanating with each beat of your heart and feel that sense of warmth expanding outward, maybe beyond the body. Stay in this space for several breaths.
Now let's bring your attention to your solar plexus, the area between the heart and the belly button. Visualize a flame there or sense your personal sense of strength and power there. Stay in this area for several breaths. Now let's bring your attention to your navel center, a couple of inches below the belly button. Visualize your deepest desire arising. Stay with this for several breaths. Now let's bring your attention to the base of your spine, to your legs and feet. Feel a sense of grounding and connected to the earth and the sense of support and foundation beneath you. Stay in this space for several breaths. Let your attention travel up and down the spine a few times, returning to each of these spaces. Then allow your attention to settle anywhere along the spine you would like. No effort involved. Notice where your sense is settling and stay there for several more breaths.
remain in this deep stillness and silence. After remaining in this stillness and silence for some period, there will likely come a moment when thoughts, impressions, or sensations start to return. They may return smoothly and gradually, or there may be a sudden jolt. You simply notice Continue to invite a sense of stillness in the body. You may start to systematically bring your attention back outward from the stillness and silence from within. And through the awareness of the relative quietness of the mind, the awareness of the smoothness of the breath and the stillness of the physical body. May you start to tune in your attention to the physical world outside of you.
bring the deep stillness and silence with you as you gently wiggle your fingers and toes. Inviting any gentle movement into the body. Perhaps remaining with your eyes closed for the next minute or two, just to feel into the physical body, perhaps scanning the body from the toes to the crown and the crown to the toes. Maybe begin to open the eyes. Perhaps even extend the arms overhead and lengthen the body. Start to reawaken from your yoga nidra. Our yoga nidra is now complete. Please allow yourself a moment to either roll onto your side and take a moment of transition. Just connecting into the stillness within your body. And whenever you're ready, let's start to come into our Sukhasana. Remember, if you're still resting, lying down, please stay where you are. There's no need to change where you are. And perhaps we'll meet with our hands in Anjali Mudra. And perhaps we'll interlace our fingers, connecting back into the thumbs and into the pointed fingers. And as we find our way into Sukhasana in our seated pose, rounding into the sits bones and lengthening through the back of the neck, let's go ahead and take a nice few breaths, breathing in as we extend the arms up to that Sahasara space, that crown chakra space beaming that light and then exhale as if you're moving all the way down to the ground as you release the hands back to your heart breathe in breathe out one last one breathe in And breathe out. Coming back into Anjali Mudra with a gentle bow of our head towards our hands in recognition of the divine that lives within us all. May your heart always stay warm. And may your smile always stay broad. And may the light that shines in me honor and see the light that shines in you. Namaste.
thank you, thank you, thank you so much for coming on this journey with me. It has been a journey and I hope you got something out of it um, that, <laughs> that has helped you through this practice of Jout Yoga. Remember, it's a practice. We take it one day at a time. Every day is a learning opportunity. So from my heart to yours, as always, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I look forward to seeing you again, hopefully next week. Namaste, everyone. Thank you. Love to you all. <laughs>